Hello everybody, this is Lara from Pure Elliott Wave with your Monday to Friday update for Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. I am going to give you some main and alternate wave counts today for Ethereum and XRP. Bitcoin first, and I cannot give you my Elliott Wave analysis for Bitcoin because that's for subscribers only on my website. So if you want it, you can get it. There are links in the description box to everything I do down below. Bitcoin is moving strongly higher at the moment. It's still the morning. It's 11.20 as I record this video. I'm just going to leave this labelled as resistance. We need to see price close above 41,100 in order for that resistance to again turn to support. We'll see what happens at the end of the session. I have been saying for a while that I think that the target from the flag pattern is probably too low and I expected support about 38,500. That's what happened three days ago and a hammer candlestick pattern formed close to the strong area of support. There's a bit of a zone actually, about 38,500, 38,000. And now price is moving strongly higher. I expect that after the breakout back test moved down and away, that's probably it. And I expect Bitcoin has probably found a long-term low and the next bullish run is in its very very early days that's my expectation could be wrong though not always right this is a balance of probability nothing is certain price has been moving sideways with declining volume let's see if this session can close with any strength when Bitcoin forms sustainable lows, it doesn't always exhibit strong volume immediately up off the low. Sometimes it has a very slow start and it's not days until days or some weeks later that you really start to see strength and upward movement. And that's one of the features of this market that makes it extremely difficult to identify lows. So I'm going to be watching volume very carefully and I would love to see an increase in volume and range. So far we are seeing an increase in rain. There was a weak bullish signal a couple of days ago from on balance volume. Resistance turns to support may assist to halt a fallen price. If it moves up and away, if this current session closes green and on balance volume moves higher, then I may want to adjust this line here and wait for another breakout or I'll just draw a new line actually. Yeah, that's better. A break above the higher, more horizontal yellow resistance line would be another weak bullish signal. ADX still tells us there is a downward trend which is a very long way from extreme. If there has been a trend change three days ago, ADX is going to take at least two weeks to catch up with that reality. It is based on an average of the last 14 sessions. So this is a backward looking or lagging indicator. So that is one of the main detractions from most of these indicators and that's why I rely fairly heavily on Elliott Wave because it's a very forward looking method. RSI is neutral, there is plenty of room to go for this downward trend if it does remain intact to continue and money flow is also neutral. This is my main Elliott Wave count for Ethereum. I am expecting a third wave at minor degree with an intermediate primary and cycle degree third waves is in its very early stages. Within minor three this wave count has minute one over here and minute two over here is a double combination zigzag x regular flat for y. If two is over there then that's where three has begun and one and two within three may be underway. Now the problem with this wave count is the breach of the base channel. It's not a really clear breach because these two candlesticks, although they are red and fully below and not touching the lower edge of the base channel, which does meet my conservative definition, they didn't make new lows. So they were mostly sideways movement, not downward movement. I have a little question about that breach, but it does reduce the probability of this wave count. What if my new wave two is not complete? How else could it be unfolding? I've been trying to outline this for you in the last few days. This is the alternate idea, so I'm charting it so it's really clear for you. It's possible that my neutral wave two could be continuing lower and sideways as an expanded flat. They are labeled A, B, C, and expanded flat subdivides three, three, five. And the B wave within an expanded flat is a 105% correction of A or longer. There is actually no rule stating a limit for a B wave in a, in a flat. There's a convention or a guideline within Elliott Wave that says when your B wave reaches twice the length of the A wave, then the idea should be discarded based upon a low probability. The most common range of wave B is from 1 to 1.38 times the length of A. Let's view this on an 
arithmetic scale, so B is a 2.09 or 209% length of A. So this has a lower probability due to the length of B. It is possible though, but it's an alternate wave count with a lower probability. And sometimes low probability outcomes do occur, and the nature of probability means that when they do occur, they will never be what you expect. It is most likely that's how probability works. It's possible, and if it does turn out to C price continue lower, then Minuet C would be extremely likely to make a new low at least slightly below A at 2115.85 in order to avoid a truncation and a very rare running flat. And the very, very few flats I have seen have B waves that move only slightly beyond the start of A. Never this far. So the target is 1965 for Minuet C to reach 2.618 length of Minuet A. So probably not to get quite as low as the log function of the 0.618 ratio of minute wave 1 which is at 1812.01 but if price did move lower and reach this target and just kept on falling then our attention would turn to the lower idea of 1812.01. Minute 2 may not move beyond the start of 1 below 1521.78. Yesterday's session has completed as a hammer candlestick pattern occurring close to strong support at 2100 that suggests we may have had a trend change the current session is so far green and it has a bit of a long lower wick so let's see how bullish this session can complete it would be great to see a strong upward session with push from volume and if that happened then this would complete a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern it needs to fully engulf the previous candlesticks body and it would also engulf the candlesticks body for the 24th Not a particularly strong bullish engulfing pattern if it engulfed the body of the candlestick from the 23rd then it'll be pretty strong so I'm watching intently to see how this candlestick closes how bullish is it going to be so far at 11:29 a.m there is no push from volume but there's a, quite a few hours to go so we can't draw a conclusion yet for the previous candlesticks, price has been moving sideways and lower, falling of its own weight. Price continues with a decline in volume, so there's some weakness in that downward movement. For Ethereum, ADX is telling us there's a downward trend in a very early stage. There's a very, very long way to go before this downward trend reaches extreme. If there has been a trend change, again, this is based on a 14-day average. It's going to take at least two weeks for ADX to catch up. RSI is neutral, a long way to go before this reaches oversold. Money flow is neutral. While price falls, volume has been declining along with volatility. So there is weakness in this downward movement. This suggests that the downward movement is a pullback within an ongoing upward trend. This is my main Elliott wave count for XRP, and in the last couple of days I've added some labels to minor wave C. This wave count sees intermediate wave 2, an incomplete zigzag, labeled A, B, C, zigzag subdivide 5, 3, Five, so A is a five wave impulse, this has a pretty good fit. B is a three wave zigzag. A, combination for B, impulse for C. C, minor wave C, must subdivide as a five wave motive structure for this wave count and I can't see an ending diagonal unfolding, it doesn't meet the rules for an ending diagonal. So I expect it may be unfolding as an impulse and if that's correct it's begun with a series of one, two, three overlapping first and second waves. It has to move through the middle of the third wave and then have a series of one, two, three small consolidations or little bounces for corresponding fourth waves, each of which may not move into its corresponding first wave price territory. And minor C must move below the end of A at 0.4456 in order to avoid a truncation. So the normal depth for big second wave corrections for cryptocurrencies is about 80 to 90% the first wave that they're correcting. So for this one, it gives us a range from 0 0.40954 to 0 0.34447. And that is absolutely normal to be expected behavior. The bearish movements within bull runs for cryptocurrencies are typically very deep. And when they do that, they convince us that the trend hasn't changed and the old bear market's going to resume and they will continue and they do that right before a big third wave takes off. So psychologically this is really really difficult to navigate. I want to consider what if intermediate wave 2 was over here so I've drawn up a wave count for that and I'll label it an alternate actually over down here. Intermediate wave 2 could be complete down here as a double zigzag but this has a big problem. 
The first zigzag in the double labeled minor wave Y really doesn't have a good fit. I can't see A and B and then C. You want to label it one, two, three here, four and five. But if you did that, three would be the shortest out of one, three and five, violating a core Elliott wave rule. So I'm saying three and four over here. Now that's not so much of a problem, but now the third wave really doesn't look right. One, two, three, four. Four is too large in comparison to two. It's more time consuming and deep. Fourth waves for cryptocurrencies usually are more brief and shallow than their counterpart second waves. So when you have a wave count where it's the opposite way around, the probability is reduced because it's not common behavior. So there's a problem within minor wave W, no problem within minor wave X, but now the problem is minor wave Y also is a zigzag A, B, C. Now the subdivisions within minor Y are okay, but the problem is minor Y has not moved beyond the end of W. The purpose of multiple zigzags is to deepen the correction when the first zigzag doesn't move price deep enough. In order to achieve that purpose, the X waves are usually brief and shallow, this one is neither, and waves Y and Z, if there is one, move reasonably beyond the previous zigzag in order to achieve their purpose of deepening the correction. And here, Y's completely failed to do that, so this does not look like a normal double zigzag. This looks like a combination, but neither W nor Y subdivide as either a flat or triangle. They're both zigzags. Multiple zigzags are labeled WXY. Multiple combinations are also labeled WXY, but you have to understand they're actually really different corrective structures. There are two families of corrective structures in Elliott Wave. There are the sharp bounces and pullbacks. That is your zigzag, zigzag family. Single, double, triple zigzags. And everything else belongs to the sideways family. You've got your combinations, triangles and flat corrections. Multiple zigzags should have a clear counter trend slope, they should not be sideways. This one is sideways, it doesn't look right, the probability of this is pretty low. But low probability doesn't mean no probability. At the daily time frame, yesterday's session completes with another hammer candlestick, so now we've got a cluster of one, two, three, four ha hammer candlestick patterns around support at 0.4875. It does look like XRP may have formed a low here. Look out for next resistance, about 54.55 cents, but it's been weakened. Price is moving lower on lighter and declining volume. There is weakness in downward movement. We cannot draw a conclusion about the current green session. It hasn't closed yet. ADX tells us for all of these at the daily time frame, there's a downward trend. But remember, at higher time frames for Ethereum and Bitcoin, there is an upward trend indicated. Not so for XRP. However, at this time frame, there's a downward trend indicated, and it's a long way to go before it reaches extreme. RSI is nearing oversold, not so far to go for this trend before it could be over, and money flow is neutral. And that's it from me today with your update for these three, and I hope everyone's having a lovely day.